The entity that's devouring our country is a huge beast with the government as the head who relies on its tentacles to feed it. And without these tentacles, the government would be powerless. You are listening to You and the Truth, where we will give you the truth face to face. Now what you do with it is up to you. One of the realities of life is that everything in this world is ultimately one way or another tied to money. Everything. It's what keeps our country and the world functioning. Hi and welcome to You and the Truth and part two of our Memory Lane series. The American Theater, Beautiful Stage, Backstage Mess. Like parents who have allowed their kids to run rampant and do as they wish, our government and its criminal cohorts, which we'll mention later, have run the household long enough. It's time for us American citizens to take back our country from these godforsaken individuals who are running it to the ground. It's time we took back control. And there are many ways to do that, none of which include violence because violence only incites more violence, thereby feeding the radical agenda. Unlike the slogan, American runs on Duncan, their agenda runs on money, the prerequisite to power. No money, no power. Now let's be clear about who and what we're talking about here, folks. Government is not the only culprit here. The entity that's devouring our country is a huge beast with the government as the head who relies on its tentacles to feed it. And without these tentacles, the government would be powerless. It's like the bank robber who, while robbing the bank, relies on one buddy to keep everyone on the ground and quiet, another to be on the lookout, and another to drive the getaway car. In the same fashion, our government relies on a series of cohorts such as the mainstream media, big tech, the pharmaceutical and banking industries, and the entertainment and sports industry, just to name a few. <clears throat> These are the entities that allow the government to wield the power they wield. These are the entities that control our lives and beat us into submission while government has its way with us. It's a huge criminal conspiracy, folks, a conspiracy whose tentacles reach worldwide. And all of these tentacles exist because of us, the people. We feed them, and money is the driving source. Without us, they cannot function, and if they cannot function, they could not help the government and the government would not have the power that they have. Make no mistake about it, folks. Government doesn't control us simply because they tax us. Government controls us because they control our minds, our thoughts, and our actions. And they do so indirectly through the industries that I just mentioned and a few others. If we genuinely wanted to take this country back, we must starve the head the government. And to starve the head, you must starve the tentacles, those criminal cohorts who do the government's dirty work in the dark and behind the scenes under the guise of, quote, entertaining us. And the one sure way to do that is to take away that which they not only love the most, but that which they could not impose their agenda without. Money. Take away their money and their power goes with it. They would be like helpless little children without us, their parents, on whom they rely on to exist. Now, as I mentioned in part one of this series, we here at You and the Truth have a proposal. A radical one, but as you've heard it said before, folks, these are radical times, and radical times call for radical solutions. And radical solutions require radical sacrifices. Like the old saying goes, no pain, no gain. So here's our proposal. Number one, cancel all social media apps and services. Use your mobile phone only to call, text, or email so you can stay in touch with your family and friends. Uh, if it was up to me, I would cancel it all together and go back to landlines, but I'm an old fogey. Number two, cancel all cable subscriptions. All they feed us is crap anyway. And let's be honest, folks. How many channels do you get with your subscription? How many do you really watch? Folks, they're screwing us. And the sad part is we're smiling while they do it. We're paying up the gazoo with money we can't afford for services we never use. We must be masochists. And this is all under the guise of 
entertainment. The problem is that we have no idea the price we're paying for that entertainment. Now, I'm not talking only about money. The price is much higher. We're paying with our freedoms and our thoughts. Now, if you feel the need to stay connected, pay for the smallest package available so you can watch, you know, and listen to your local news. Uh, you know, in some channels you may want to watch. But if enough people demand a package that includes only their local channels, the cable providers would have no choice but to provide one. In the alternative, and better yet, cancel your cable subscription altogether and get an HD antenna. Now let's move on to some of the other industries who feed the beast that's trying to devour us. Industries that prey on our psyche to distract us while we're being taken to the cleaners and are no wiser for it. The banking industry. <clears throat> Folks, what a con. They've developed a system where we hand over our hard-earned money to them, and they not only use it to earn money from our money, but where they dictate the terms and conditions as to how and when we can access our money. Try going to an ATM and withdrawing a $1,000. Nope. Limit is 600. But you say, but wait a minute, it's my money. Well, now it's their money too. And as the old saying goes, possession is nine-tenths of the law. And since they possess it, they control it. And so they set the rules. Or better yet, put your money in a certificate of deposit and try to withdraw it before the time they dictate. Guess what? You pay a penalty for withdrawing your money. Now, I could go on and on, but what's the point? We have all been taught and indoctrinated that we should put money in a bank. Our solution? Withdraw all of your money. Of course, you're going to have to do it in little chunks and during a long period of time at the risk of being penalized. But in the long run, it'll be worth it. Then start paying cash for everything. Now, of course, that's almost impossible because we buy most of our stuff online, so we have to use a credit or a debit card. See, it's all part of the plan, folks. This is why they've done and are doing everything possible to shut down small neighborhood businesses so that you have no choice but to purchase everything online, and therefore, you need a card. It's a vicious circle. Now, how do you starve this tentacle? Well, ditch online purchasing and start buying from your local neighborhood businesses. I know, I just lost about 90% of you. Because we're hooked, folks. Online buying is like a drug. And we're all junkies. Finally, the entertainment industry. Movies, sports, and music. They're a cancer, folks. A cancer we've allowed into our lives, our homes, and our psyche. Once again, under the guise of entertainment. Now I ask myself, how much entertainment can I take? How much entertainment can I ingest at the risk of ignoring other areas of my life? You see, the entertainment industry not only drains our brains and souls, but our bank accounts, because they use our hard-earned money to finance the very criminal enterprises that are stealing our dignity and our freedoms. Imagine what these entities previously mentioned would do if they were starved to death. And we have the power to do it. So here's our proposal regarding the entertainment industry. Movies. Stop watching them. All they do is feed us the garbage manufactured by Hollywood and the entertainment business, all of which are part of the criminal enterprise in cahoots with our government. These industries are designed to destroy our families, our lives, and those of our children. Hollywood and its actors are out of control, folks. They spew nothing but hate and division, as if anyone really cared what they think. The sad part is that we promote these insecure, narcissistic, self-serving morons as idols to our children. You want to destroy an entity? You want to destroy a country? Go for the kids. Sporting events. Stop attending them. Stop watching them. The actions and non-actions of these multi-billion dollar entities are disgusting. The condoning of kneeling during the national anthem. 
A slap in the hand fine when it was uncovered that a World Series champion had cheated its way to a title. The constant scandals of drug and spousal abuse by overpaid athletes who are touted as heroes to our young generation. And the list goes on. The problem is that we're hooked on sports. And it's by design, folks. I don't blame people. We work so hard just to keep our heads above water that we feel the need to disconnect. And so, sports, movies, and music are our drugs. And talking about music, stop paying for downloads and attending concerts. This industry is full of disgusting, hyped-up individuals who believe they're gods simply because they can sing or play a musical instrument. And it's our fault, folks. Just like athletes, we prop them up as role models for our kids. We better think again. We pump billions of dollars a year into these industries, not realizing that they're setting us up to be screwed. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more. Now, if these suggestions just mentioned were implemented, within one year or less, we would bring these institutions down to their knees. And with them, they're corrupt puppets in Congress who carry out their agenda. It's time we started calling the shots. And the most effective shots are greenbacks. The problem is that we become too spoiled, too fat, too lazy, and too complacent for too long. And for those of you who think that life would be unbearable without your mobile phone, social media, movies, sports, and music, just imagine what your life will be in a country run by individuals and companies who feed you only the information they decide you should have, limit what you can watch, monitor every word that comes out of your mouth, and not allow you to think or do what you want to think or do, at the risk of losing every freedom you now take for granted. But wait, that's happening now. We're just too spoiled, too fat, too lazy, and too complacent to realize it. Folks, we're numb. We've had the crap beaten out of us for so long, we don't even feel it. We've accepted it as part of our lives. It's like the poor spouse who's been verbally and physically abused for years and has accepted it as part of the relationship. It's time we stop bending over and allowing these morons to keep kicking us in the ass. It's time we did the kicking. And the only way to do that is to kick them where it hurts. Their pocketbooks. You see, America doesn't run on Duncan. America runs on patriotism. And that, my fellow patriots, is the truth. What you do with it, well, is up to you. You have just come face to face with the truth. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell so you will be notified when we drop new episodes.